Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome to our session, A Pathway to CNCF Citizenship via Community Bridge. My name is Ken Owens. I am with FISERV currently. Uh, previously, I was at MasterCard, and in my free time, I like to go out with my, uh, my children and do outdoor activities and, and have fun outside. Hi, I am Darshan Chaudhary. Uh, I work as a software developer in Bangalore, India. Outside of work, I like to read, I think, uh, fiction, mostly history. We have divided the talk into two parts. In the first part, I'll discuss what is LFX mentorship. And in the second part, Ken will talk about why you should care about participating. When we submitted the talk proposal, the program was called Community Bridge Program. And the name change is a testament to how quickly things change in the cloud native landscape. The stated mission of the LFX mentorship program is to accelerate the adoption, innovation, and sustainability of open source software. It is essentially a mentoring platform that provides project-based mentorships. The platform invites all CNCF projects to submit proposals. Each proposal is a description of some work that the project wants to get done. It can be a new feature or improvement in some part of the program or a set of bug fixes even related to a certain subset of the project. Each proposal also has a mentor who will guide the mentee for the duration of the program. So the LFX mentorship program is similar to the Google Summer of Code, the GSOC program in some sense, um, in that there are projects which are private ideas and there are mentors uh, who take mentees and guide them through the duration of the program. But the important difference is that the LFX mentorship program is directed towards the professionals working in the industry, uh, whereas GSOC is only for uni university students. Uh, people who are not currently enrolled in a university program cannot apply to GSOC, but everybody is welcome to apply in the LFX mentorship program. So some history about the program. Uh, it was launched in 2019. The original pilot had three mentees. In the Q1 of 2020, there were seven mentees that participated that graduated from the program. In the Q2, uh, which is when I participated as well, there were pretty good mentees. And the Q3, Q4 run had 23 mentees. And there's an ongoing program right now, ongoing run right now, which has 35 project ideas that were submitted. The duration is three months. And there's a student stipend as well. This stipend basically depends on where you're living. Uh, so it ranges from 3,000 to 6.6 thousand USD. And it depends on the purchasing power parity of uh, the place where you live. So the program duration can be divided into four phases. The first stage is the project applications open stage. Uh, this is where the platform is open for proposals from CNCF projects. Each proposal has to include a description of the problem and also the mentor who will be working with the mentee on that problem. The second phase is the applications open for mentees phase. So this is where all the proposals that were submitted by the participating projects are reviewed by the mentees. The, the mentees go through all these proposals and apply to the projects that they like. Each mentee can apply for up to three projects to maximize their chances of getting selected. They can, of course, uh, get selected to only one, but they can apply to three. And the entire a phase lasts for two weeks. Now, this is the mentee application review phase, the third phase, which is quite important. This is when 
uh, there are discussions between mentors and mentees. The discussions can be in the form of the mentors asking the mentees to give a SOP, a statement of purpose, or they can have a discussion even uh, to see if the mentor and the mentee are a good match for the project. And finally, after the third phase, you enter the longest phase, which is the coding phase. Um, this lasts for 12 weeks. Um, generally, at the beginning, in the first week itself, there's a periodic meeting which is set up between the mentor and the mentee to get in sync with respect to the mentee's progress on the project. It's a recurring meeting, it's a periodic meeting, and uh, usually it's a weekly meeting, though that depends on uh, the mentor and the mentee. The agenda is to talk about last week's work and also to plan out the work for the coming week. This is where the mentee can pick the mentor's brain and get help on any issue they might be stuck on. At the end of the first half of the coding phase, there's a midterm evaluation after which the mentee is paid half the second. And after this end of the uh, week 12, which is the end of the coding phase also, the, there's a final evaluation and the mentee is paid the remaining amount. So now I'll talk about my personal experience in the program. I found the program to be quite competitive to get in. I think uh, I applied to all the three projects to maximize my chances and it was a huge relief when I got accepted. I tried to boost my candidature by raising PRs to projects, but in the end, I wasn't 100% sure I'll get in, but when I got in, it was, it was, it was nice. It was also all worth it because participating is a great learning opportunity. Uh, the projects are not trivial, and this is not something you could do in a weekend. You could finish in a weekend. They are challenging and fun. CNCF projects also have a very high standard of code quality, uh, and you have to make sure that your contributions are of great quality to be accepted. You learn a lot as well. Apart from the mentors that you interact with, you also get to sort of talk to and work with other members of the community, and everyone teaches you something new. Uh, some tips I can share here is choose a project that you're really passionate about, that you really like. Choosing a project that you aren't passionate about is a recipe for some unhappy times. You'll, you'll have to work on the difficult problem, which you won't be motivated to do. So, yeah, find a project which you really like. Also, build a case for your candidature. Uh, there are a lot of mentees applying, and you need to make sure that you send out. Try to make yes to the project, write blogs showcasing your familiarity with the project, talk to the mentors, uh, everything counts. And make sure that the mentor has a good reason to choose you over everyone else. And in, in my, at the end of my uh, internship, I was invited to be a member of the project that I participated in. So that happens as well. You basically can create a long-term association with the project that you worked on because working with a community for 12 weeks brings you close to them. Uh, you have greater fam familiarity with the project and you actually contribute even after the uh, duration of the internship. Okay, so now Ken will talk about the why. Thank you, Darshan. That was awesome. And I really appreciated your comments and your, um, your input and a lot of the suggestions that you made were great. So thank you for that. Um, for my part, I want to just kind of provide some of the mentors um, sort of background and perspective into this. So, um, you know, kind of why would you want to be involved with community bridge i think it's you know for one it's it's really involving um 
support the community, which is really important, um, not only in for the CNCF and our, our end user community, but also um, for the open source community that we want to be involved in. And so getting involved, helping out the community and supporting the community is something that I think is, is um, a goal for all of us in, in um, the CNCF. The other piece that's important to keep in mind is a fresh perspective. As you, you look at you know um, the mentees that are coming into this program, they're very diverse um, backgrounds. They have um, a lot of different opportunities to bring a perspective to uh, you know a larger organization that is needed, um, especially as we're looking at the cloud native transformations we're doing. Kind of along those lines is, is the culture that um, you're bringing um, into them them into is also important to consider because you don't want to just force them into the culture that your organization has, but you also at the same time have to consider how your culture is going to impact them and how they can bring some of their own culture and their own perspectives into the into the discussions is very important. And of course, you know, a, a big part of, of being in this program is to give back. Um, whether it's, you know, a time, um, the projects, you know, contributing to the projects, being part of that community again, it's important that we are, uh, you know, continually looking at how we can make our community better, how we can make the CNCF uh, community um, stronger and, and striving to, you know, bring the best, the best value and the best uh, minds together to make, uh, you know, cloud native, not, not just a, you know, a hot, um, you know, fad that's going to end it's, at some point, but continue to iterate and, and grow into the community that we're becoming already. Um, the next, you know, piece is, is sort of looking at the process, and, and the process is important to understand because it's not um, it's not quite what you're used to, maybe as you think about the way you um, recruit today and the way you work in, in a business today. And so, um, as, as you kind of heard Darshan mention, it's important to think about how you want to um, provide. Um, support for a project in the in the community, the advertisement and how you want to try to make make your project stand out is a big part of that that process. And so, as as a mentor, I want to attract the best mentees that I could, and so I want to make sure I advertise the work that we're doing, what 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 we're trying to contribute to, what what project we're contributing to, and what the requirements are to be able to really you know be successful in this role. Um, and that's, I think, really important to set that that expectation up front that, you know, we want you to be successful. We want to be successful. We're trying to, you know, solve a, a business problem. I would like to, to say that as end users, you know, we don't, you know, it's fun, right? We actually have a business problem we're solving, be, you know, the best talent we can to, to help us solve those problems. And so making it clear what those requirements are. And then after you, you know, get a list of, of the potential mentees, it's important to kind of look through that list, um, pick out the ones that you really think, you know, on, on paper are going to provide you the, the best value for what you're looking to accomplish. Um, the program does a great job of providing um, the right level of detail. You don't have to guess or try to figure out, have the right people applying for this, this role. Um, they, they ask the right questions, they have them fill in the right information so you know right off the bat um, what, what mentees are going to make a good fit. Um, you then kind of look at that list, and in my case, I had about 12 um, mentees that applied for my, uh, my project. Um, I went through that list and I went down to about six that made, you know, the cut that looked like they would be the best of, of, the, of, the, um, of the pool to look for. Um, we then interviewed those individuals and, and discussed, you know, kind of what the project was. We tried to, you know, set expectations and make sure they understood what we were trying to accomplish. And in, in doing that, it really helped in, in many ways, but I think the biggest ways it really helped to like, you know, make sure that we have the right individuals and we have the right um, setting of, of those goals and, and expectations and outcomes that we're looking for. So kind of what was I looking for, right? What do mentors look for in this role? I think it's, it's primarily individuals that are, you know, coming into um, this project, looking to, you know, have a passion, like you kind of heard Dutch mentioned, they have a passion for what we're trying to accomplish. They get it very quickly and understand why we're trying to accomplish it. Um, 12 weeks isn't a long time, you know, and so you only get six sprints. And in, in our case, we're doing two week sprints, you only get six sprints out of out of the um, 
the, the time frame that you have the intern. And so you're really looking to make sure that you have someone who's a self-starter, that they're ready to get going. They want to be successful. Um, they want to get back to the community, you know, kind of going back to the previous um, previous bullets of, you know, why is it important to to be in this, this program to begin with. And then as you kind of look through um, and talk with those individuals, it becomes very apparent the ones that, that have that drive, have that for a, minute, for, um, for a mentee, for a project. The, um, the next bullet then is, I think, really important to think about because you, you want to, as you select this individual, you need to make sure that um, once you select them, that you then set clear expectations with them. Um, you explain what you, the outcomes are, you explain what the business problem is you're trying to solve, you explain what the project is that you want to be involved in. Um, in our case, we try to provide as much detail as we could about the project. We try to give them um, as much information about how to join the community. We try to introduce them into the community. Um, we picked a few of the, um, the, you know, open issues that need to be resolved that, that looked like there would be good issues to get involved with as, as a company. And we asked them to kind of start with these issues. And so Dutch and kind of spent some time working through these issues, contributing, you know, some, some code back to the community. And then that project said, Hey, why don't you, you know, as you heard from Dutch and join us and then become one of our, our um, you know, contributors, which is awesome, right? It's really great when you see, um, the mentees really take on a project, take on a problem, work hard at it and then solve it. And that kind of gave him also like the, you know, it was like a two week effort that kind of gave him some really good experience and in, in the project we were trying to get involved in. And it built up that confidence that he can solve and do other problems that we needed to have solved. And so, you know, each sprint after that, he continued to grow and build on that momentum. And that's what you're looking for. Um, and then, you know, the last bullet is, is really important to just keep, you know, remembering to you, you always want to, you know, do that, set the expectations for the, the next two weeks, we, you know, work through the, the two weeks of coding, review at the end of what, what you had done, and then set the, the goals for the next two weeks. And so just keep that sprint review, iterate, you know, the type of that, that model going the whole time. Keys um, in terms of like being a mentor, I think it's important. As you, as you sign up to be a mentor, you want to consider why you signed up. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, you know, in, in my case, I really like to work with, with um, the community. I really like to work with developers that are, you know, coming into this environment that, that are trying to learn more about the, our community and want to be more involved in our community. And I want to try to, you know, convey as much of my background, my experiences, um, um, ways to solve problems that I think would be helpful to, you know, this group of, of very talented individuals that we have, you know, coming into our community now. Um, have a, you know, understand why you're doing this and, and have your passion come through, have your desire to make, you know, this program very successful, make this, this relationship with your, your mentee very successful. Um, to me, you know, a lot of that has to do with feedback. I didn't, you know, considerate but thoughtful feedback to you, to your, um, to your mentee is very important, right? And and it's it's always about the context and the content that you're trying to provide, right? So it's it's not just asking them to do something or saying, hey, it'd be great if you did X. It's really explaining and sitting down and and you know getting on the screen and coding with them and showing them, you know, a better way or a, a different way of of thinking through a problem and, and coding it up. Um, but to always do that in a thoughtful way. It's not, you know, you're not trying to um, overwhelm them with too much details, right? They're, they're not um, senior in, in most of these use cases, right? Most of these these projects that we're, we're supporting, but um, they are very good good resources. And so you don't want to, you know, overwhelm them too much. The other thing is to be open. Um, make sure that they have the ability to reach you at any time, to spend time with you. Um, and in my case, we would, you know, meet at the beginning and end of the project so every, you know, every week we would have like a kind of a quick touch base as a, as a project team, so as a, as a sprint team, right? Um, but then I would spend every week, um, I would dedicate time just to sort of, you know, do some career planning, do some coaching, 
um, give give Dasha a chance to ask questions about what we're working on, why we're working on it, the business side of why we're trying to do what we're trying to do, um, how open source plays into an enterprise organization, and some of those types of discussions, right? Just to kind of make sure that he understood that there's more to this project than just you know going through the the coding steps and joining the community and, and contributing to it. There's also the why and and why is important as you're as you're growing in your career, obviously. Um, and then you know that the last thing is sort of beyond the community bridge or the LFX mentoring platform, right? There's there's a relationship that you're trying to build here. And and in our case, we spent you know some time getting to know each other. We you know we talked weekly, um, like I mentioned. After the internship ended, I wanted to continue that relationship because to me it's it's all about you know mentoring is not just a three you know, 12 week, you know, sprint, right? it's, it's, you know, it's important in that 12 weeks, but it's important to continue after that 12 weeks. And so I spent time, um, you know, monthly with, with Darshan after the, the internship ended and, you know, we'll continue to, to, to work with, with Darshan as much as, you know, possible um, monthly from, from here on out and have a, you know, chance to meet him one day after COVID's over maybe. So, so with that, you know, I want to thank you, you know, very much for your time. I want to thank Darshan for, for you know, being a great, um, great intern for us. Um, did a great job and we're very proud of the work you've done and um, wish you a lot of continued success. And with that, we'll take whatever questions you have. Thank you.